up to chapter 38, verse 27. So then Tamar, after all that's at the end of it, she she it was time for her to give birth. Behold, she had twins. Right? She says, the time she gave birth by, by Rebecca, it states, by Rebecca, it states, when her term to bear grew full. But here it says, well, at the time when she came to give birth. So what's going on here? Above, by Rebecca, she gave birth after a full term. And here it was not a full term. And behold, there were twins. Hold on, let me put in my AirPods because a lot of people are talking here. Something going on in the yeshiva. Behold, there were twins. Malay, the word twins is written full spelling. And later on, Tomim is chaser, it's spelled missing. Because one of them was wicked. said he came. So above, with respect to Yaakov and Esav, it says there were twins. But there it's written without the letter Aleph. But here it's written with the letter Aleph to say that they were, that here, they were both righteous. They were both tzaddikim. Mayitain, so this is the first time we're going to see that there are brothers who get along. Minei tomim. Tomim. Behold, there were twins. Okay. And then, and that this is the source of the Mashiach because it's the first time we have the brothers who get along. Okay. Is the soup hot? Okay. Okay. All righty, all righty. So, hello, Seth. And it's your aunt's your site. So maybe we should say her name. What's her Hebrew name? Vela Bela. Vela Bela. 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 will study in her memory and her schos. Of course, in the schos that all the 136 hostages be safe and be released speedily from captivity. So... Also, we're going to do in this context, I didn't have a chance to send it out, but I'm going to send it out. I think actually this is maybe coming from the, your friend's family that um, we got contacted that they're doing 24 hours of Tanakh study to and uh, to be a host for the family, for the hostages, for the specific hostage. His name is Hirsch. And uh, his name is uh, Hirsch Goldberg. So, so... They said it's tomorrow. No, but that's what the time. I'm just thinking. So I don't know if it's the same. Oh, same kid. Okay. So, so they said that tomorrow is going to be when we do this. But in Israel, in the middle of the night, it's going to be hard to do the 24 hours. So they asked our yeshiva to study people to pick a chapter of Tanakh, and I'll send it out to study from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Everybody takes a chapter of Tanakh to be studying to uh, be a segula and a merit for him to be released speedily from captivity. So so I'm going to send it out. People will sign up and we should populate it that we study a lot of Torah, especially, uh, but specifically a chapter of Tanakh from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. Well, and everybody who goes to Rowi Shir, Rowi Shir will be on nine, so you're already half of the way there. Okay. So, so okay. Vayi, um, we're up to chapter 38, verse 28. It says, oh, okay, that's what I was saying, that this is the first, why are these the, the brothers were from which the Mashiach comes from? This is the first time we have brothers getting along in the, in the Tanakh. And so that's the example that is necessary for the Mashiach. And when the brothers get along, when the brothers feel the, uh, when the brothers feel the pain, and and the solidarity, that's when we have redemption. Okay. So Pazel Kavcha says, when she gave birth, and as she was giving birth, he put out a hand. And the woman who was giving birth, she stuck out her hand. 
the woman who was the midwife, uh, when the hand was coming out, she took a she took his hand and she tied on his hand shani. Shani is crimson thread. Uh, you could have read it as as shani a second, but it's read as, as shani saying zayotzarishona. She's saying this one went out first, the one who had the mark on it, the crimson thread. Rashi says, Vayitenyad, he put out a hand. This one stuck his hand outside. And after she tied the thread on his hand, he took it back. So it's interesting that he stuck out his hand. He was the first, but then the other one came out first. But in this case, there was no there was no confusion because she demarcated it by striking his hand, by tying it around his hand. Okay, so and then, so Jerry, yeah, I see you have a question, Jerry. Uh, yeah, uh, this uh, sounds preposterous. Does uh, do w- women who give birth have have the child uh, eject a hand or a foot and then retract it? I I, I find that preposterous. Um, that's I have no idea. I've been I've been present, thank God, at seven childbirths, but they were all they were all um they were all single births. So I don't know, maybe some maybe somebody who knows more than me can tell. Uh, that know. can happen in a breach delivery if the baby if it would be a breach if it would be a breach, that would be so dangerous. Yeah. I can't even imagine her surviving. A breach, uh, I mean, but they know how to do it. You know, a breach, something that they don't even teach the technique anymore of how to deliver a breech baby. They don't even teach it. That, that now they just do a C-section. But of course, a C-section was not done in the uh, in, in the ancient world. If you did a C-section, you would, uh, of course, you would, um, the woman would die. So it's possible that they had the technique then to do a breed to to deliver twins by a breach, but I can only imagine how dangerous it must have been. Imam, so then, in fact, you said the word breach in English comes from the word parrots. Right. right. Well, that's this. So maybe, <laughs> right. So maybe it was a breach, and so the breach. Uh, okay, maybe it was a breach baby, and that's why he stuck his hand out first. Okay, I, I'm I'm very quickly going out of my field. <laughs> Actually, okay. I think it's one of those things where anything can happen. Yeah, yeah. So we don't have any doctors on the thread. Um, I could text my wife. Well, if you have a specific question, no, we don't. I just was wondering, where's the doctor when you need one? Um, well, Shaul he teaches the morning of Luchim to us. He's Wednesday night, and he'll know more about this. Uh, than anybody, yeah, we can consult so, somebody in our yeshiva network to get this answer. Yeah, yeah, Shaul. I'm saying, yeah, he's our guy. So, okay, so uh, Jerry, we need there. Um, I'll, I'll write to Shaul right now. I'm sure he'll get back to me. Okay, okay. Thank hold you. on, man. I'm sure he'll get back to me. But it, uh, it wasn't a twin, I mean, it doesn't putting a hand extended out it seems very okay. unlikely. You know? Um. I'll say, please explain to us the uh, the uh, phenomenon of one baby sticking out his hand before the other, retracting it before the other baby, and then retracting it. Uh, I'll, uh Genesis thirty eight twenty eight. Uh, but the thing is it must be unusual because if it was usual the Torah wouldn't have been talking about it right Right. so okay Okay, so now we go on well let's just see I had to take it so that I could get uh, okay beautiful so okay Vayi kemeshiv yado. 
Okay, wait, wait, wait. So verse 28, okay. Okay, Vayi Kamei Shivya, the verse 29. And when he brought back his hand, Vinei Yatsa Achiv, his brother went out. Vatomer Ma Paratsta Lacha Paratz. And she said to the brother, With what strength have you asserted yourself? Vayi Krashmo Paratz. And she called him Paratz. So Paratz is the father of the Mashiach. So the Mashiach, maybe, I guess the lesson for us is he's not the first one to stick his hand out. But then he, when, when he thought he was running late, he boom, he powered through. Chazak, paretz, paretz means chazak talacha chozek. You acted with strength. Vayikrashimo paretz. And she called, and he called his name paretz. Okay. The Acharya Tzachiv. And afterwards went out his brother, Asher al Yadoa Shini, that was on, on, afterwards went out his brother, whose hand was the uh, one that went out first, Asher al Yadoa Shini, Vayikrashimo Zarach, and she called his brother Zarach. What is Zarach? Zarach means brightness. So Rashi says, on whose hand was the Oh, that's our doorbell. We put in a high-end technology. Now we have a video. Is it a ring? Blink. So should I get it? I think he's just testing it. I don't think you have to get it. But but I don't, but but that's our high-end tech security. We don't want to talk about security because we're on YouTube, but we have yeah. high-end security, high-end. Okay. So so Rashi says, Asher al yado asheni, arba yado ksuvos kan. The word yad is written here four times because it says yado, yad, yado, vayitain yad. So the word yad appears here four times. Keneged, keneged, it corresponds to arba haramim, corresponding to the four bands. Shemal Achan Shayatsamimenu, which Achan, who descended from Zerach, violated. And he violated the ban against taking something from Jericho. So there's a mistake in Safaria. What does Safaria say? Who was a descendant of Peretz. What? Sephara says that Achan was a descendant of Peretz. No, uh, he was a descendant of Zerach. Right, so I'm saying there was a mistake. There's a mistake in Sephara. I'll, I'll, I'll write yeah, them Yeah, we should let them know. Somebody ringing the bell. Okay. The negative Now, these are corresponding to the four things that Achan took. Aderet Shinar, Shteicha Ticho Kesef, Shamataim Shkalim or Shon Zahav. He took a Babylonian cloak, two pieces of silver, and a gold ingot. Okay. So why is it significant? Because these things are symbols of the kingship. And and, and uh, his descendant was trying to be a king. That's the message. Okay. Because Zarah, he tried to be first. Because of the brightness of the appearance of the crimson thread. So this is the significance. Okay. Okay, so this is this chapter 38. A very powerful chapter about the Mashiach and about admitting your wrongs about redemption. I find it to be one of the most powerful chapters in the entire Tanakh because it's the Messianic chapter. And David comes from this union. David comes from Peretz. Ruth comes, uh, David comes from Peretz. That's how the book of Ruth ends. If you look in there, what does it say? Peretz, it starts, how does the end of the book of Ruth uh, the last four verses of the book of Ruth. Where does the lineage start from? Do you have that, Rabbi Yosef? Do you have that? 
No way. I've never read the Megillah. Have what? How? I oh, read how Fikah, the by God. Ends? Yeah, the... I'll, just, I'll just open it. Yeah, I think Sorry. it's in the Steinzogs. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's in the back of the Steinzogs. Come on, you got it. Who's going to win? <laughs> Live or him? Come on, Avril. Uh, we'll with... uh, you could beat him. Okay. She's got it. Yeah. Okay, what is it? This is from like to see your parents. Oh, see, it starts with parrots. That's what I was saying. It starts with parrots. And so it counts from parrots 10 generations until you get to David. Right, right. So therefore, we see from here, it, they count how many generations it is from parrots to David. Okay. Verse 18. Parrots, parrots Hetzron, Hetzram, Aminadav, Nachshon, Salma, Boaz, Obed, Yishai, and David. Yeah. Boaz, Obad, Yishai. Okay, so that's also significant. From Perez to David is 10 generations. Now I want to suggest something which is radical. I'm even afraid to keep this on the recording. I'm even afraid to keep stop it. No, I'm not that afraid. I'm not that afraid to stop it. I'm going to, going to share something with you which is radical. <laughs> Technically speaking, the union of a father-in-law and his daughter-in-law yes. produces a mom's heir. Yeah. That is what the Torah tells us. The Torah tells us that a, a, a father-in-law and a daughter-in-law produces a mom's heir. So, technically speaking, these offspring were mom's heirim. But, the Torah also tells us that a mom's heir, it says, Adora Siri, until the 10th generation, they cannot come into the community. But David was a 10th generation. So David was allowed to come into the community. Do you follow what I'm just saying to you now? Do you follow this yes. reading? That's what, something I thought of. I never read it anywhere. So it's probably it's going to be taken with a with a big cup of salt. But still. Because most rabbis will just say that this was before Madan Torah. And therefore, it's not relevant. Yeah, but what I'm suggesting is that David, there are people who are accusing David of not being able to come into the community. We saw this in the Gemara. The Gemara said, remember we had this discussion, the Gemara says, is David allowed to be king? And they said, before you ask, remember this is the Gemara, it's in, I think it's in the bottom of Ksubos, right at the beginning, you can look it up, exactly. Remember we did this in Adaf Yomi. It says, well, before you ask if he could be king, ask if he's allowed to marry into the Jewish people because he comes from the Ammonites and the Moabites. But I'm saying there's another reason why he couldn't come into the Jewish people. If he's a descendant of Tamar and Judah, maybe he's a mamzer. Anyway, that's... Wouldn't uh, that undercut a little bit of Tamar's, you know, action and making it a, so sure a, it a real, uh, you know, kosher event? Yeah, it would definitely undercut it. But if we go by the later verses of the Torah, it's clear that this was... was but you know what I like about it? Yeah, let me hear. Tamar knew. So for her, she did the right thing. He didn't know. So in his mind, they could have been Mom's Aram because that's the way he thought it was going to be. So maybe, like you say, they were Mom's Aram for, for Judah, you know, but, you know, because that's what his mindset was. He, right. he thought he was, you know. Right. He didn't have intent, but the, no intent. he had intent to have the intercourse, but he didn't have intent to have it with Tamar. Um, right. but, the, but the point is, I think with the Mom's there, we say, you don't require uh intent. Doesn't matter. If you did it, if you did the action, the offspring would still be a mom's earth, even if right, he but the didn't have says Lishma, right? So it's the same back to well, Amon say Moab, about it's Tamar. The same it of the says, daughters of, of Lot. Right. No, I'm how Hashem arranges these things in a very mysterious and powerful way. Also, above also, our judgment. Also, the Ammonites and the Moabites are themselves Mamzerim because they come from the offspring of Lot and his and his daughters. So they too had the same issue of the ten generations. Mm -hmm. So they too were ten generations. So basically, everybody was cleansed by then. That's my point. Okay, so now next verse. Uh, I'm sorry. Whose daughter? Uh, whose daughters were? Uh, Mamzerim, Wot and his daughters. 
Who, I'm sorry, who? Load, load. Oh, no, load, load, load. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Grandchildren slash children. Yeah, right. Okay. The Yosef Hurad Mitzrayma. Joseph went down to Egypt. Vayikneu Potiphar Saris Paro. And Potiphar, a courtier, uh, uh, basically, it was a Saris of Paro. Now, Saris we usually translate as like a eunuch, but here, I don't know what it means. It means like he was an officer of Paro. Acquire Joseph. He was the Saratabachim. He was the minister of the butchers. I guess it sounds like he was the executioner. Mm. Ish Mitzri. He was an Egyptian man. Miyada Ishmaelim. Purchased him from the Ishmaelites, Asher Horidu Shema, that brought him down to there. So now let's look at this Rashi. Let's look at this Rashi. So let's look at the Rashi. We <laughs> get a piece of pepper for a sec. <laughs> okay. Is it John's? Yeah, right. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then, what's well, a spicy topic? We're a poti far. So come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yosef went down to Egypt. This goes back to the original topic. But interrupts it. In order to put next to it the descent of Judah. With the sale of Joseph. To say, why they put the story of Joseph next to next to the basically Rashi saying we interrupted the narrative of Joseph oh hold on Shaul says it's he says it's easier to do verbally than in a text message he's not responding by a text it's understandable well. So he says, why was the story of Joseph interrupted with the narrative of Judah? In order to put the descent of Judah next to the sale of Joseph. That why did they take Judah down from his position of glory? Because of Joseph. Because of Joseph, they already do and do also. He lost his leadership ability because he allowed the sale of Joseph. They, of course, regretted it significantly. Furthermore, Tamar. We want to put these two, these two, uh, I guess, thematic stories next to each other. The actions of Tamar, who was accused of being a harlot, and Potiphar's wife, who accused Joseph of being a harlot. Just like Tamara acted for the sake of heaven. Af zu Hashem Shemayim. This you might not have been expecting. Potiphar's wife acted for the sake of heaven. She has a bad rap. But here, Rosh, she's telling us she acted for the sake of heaven. Sherasa be'etzdroligion shela. She saw through her astrological prediction. That in the future she was going to have children through Joseph. She said, I have a I have a prediction. So she thought she was supposed to be with him. The any Yodat, she didn't know Imimena and Mibita. She didn't realize it was not from her, if whether it was from her or from her daughter. Joseph ended up marrying Osna Osnat Bat Potifera. So Joseph ended up marrying her daughter. But she acted for the sake of heaven. Why was why is the rabbis trying to tell us that she acted for the sake of heaven? It's a little bit unusual. Yes, Jerry has a question. Jerry, please. Jerry. If you unmute, Jerry. I can't we can't hear you, Jerry. Okay. You're muted. All right, so. Okay, here's here's the problem. Uh, uh, the the uh, Rashi is trying to uh, 
uh, uh, bring Potiphar's wife and mix her into the Jewish family. Yet, if that's the case, yet she is committing adultery uh, against her husband, uh, which is against Jewish law. So there's a real tension here in Rashi between uh, uh, what he's saying. On the one hand, he's trying to uh, bring her into the Jewish fold, and yet uh, she's um, uh, uh, violating Jewish law by trying to have uh, relations with uh, young uh, uh, Joseph. Yeah. Seth, were you trying to say something? Okay, so that's a very good point. I think what we'd have to say is the following. We'd have to say that um, that Rashi didn't say she did a good thing. It said her intent was good. Her intent was good. So she was misguided. She didn't have the power of the Torah to tell her sometimes you what you think is right is not actually right. She was just a, a peasant, you know, an Egyptian. But but she, remember, but remember, she grabbed uh, Joseph's uh, coat or uh, jacket and uh, tried to stop him from leaving. Uh, it wasn't just thought on her part. She wanted action. I I. You know, you bring up a good point. It's an interesting midrash. Like, why do they feel the need? The real question for me is, why does the midrash feel the need to say that she acted for the sake of heaven? And I think Rashi is telling us that the midrash is is trying to explain why did Joseph marry her daughter? Of all the women in Egypt to marry, why would he marry her daughter? So, assuming she was her daughter. So, We'd have to say that the reason why he married her daughter was because he had a nevuah about it. It was Ruach HaKodesh, was prophecy. Mm -hmm. And so that would explain that she that she maybe saw this nevuah. Oh, it's a, it's a stretch. Yeah, this one is a little bit of a stretch, but okay. So, okay. We'll do one more pasuk and then we'll, we'll dive in. Okay, Vehi Hashem. Hold on one second. Hold on. Okay, Vehi Hashem. At your safe. So our God was with Joseph. Vehi Ish Matzliach, and he was very successful. Vehi Bevei Sadunav Hamitzri. And he was in the uh, he was in the house of the Egyptian master. Mayar Adonav to his master saw that God was with him. It's always the thing about Joseph that everybody else saw his greatness except for those closest to him, like his brothers. But everybody else could see his greatness right away. He was clearly a man of incredible talents. They could see his greatness. Sometimes the people who are closest don't see the greatness. And the man and Vayara Dunav Kashemito, his master saw that God was with him. Whatever he did, God, God made him successful. So Rashi says, Kiashemito, Shem Shemaim Shagorbafiv. The name of heaven was fluent in his mouth. He was always referring to God in his conversation. Well, what is the what is the importance of this word Asher being omitted? I I don't understand. Where do you see Asher is being omitted? That's what uh, the English Verse translation four. of uh, Sepharia says. Verse 4. Oh, that's the next verse. Oh. Uh, no, it's not, it's not saying it's so significant. It's just saying that sometimes the Torah speaks in an elliptical manner. That's all it's saying. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll read that verse and we'll stop. And Joseph found favor in his eyes by Toto, and he served him. Well, Natan Biodo, right? It skips the word Asher. So he put him over his house, and everything that belonged to him, he put into his hand. Okay, so, okay, we'll stop the recording here, do the prayers, and uh, we'll dive in Minfa.